Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Unfiltered Podcast. My name is Lee Stevenson. I have the joy of being the Executive Director of Church Planning with Converge, a local church planter. I'm Danny Parmalee, and I oversee church planning for Converge Mid-America. And uh, we've got a special episode today with our guest, Don Willeman, a church planter from the Northeast. I'll let you, Don, just say hi to everyone and tell us a little bit of your story. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, guys. So uh, my name's Don, and I'm a church planner in uh, New England, northern New England, right on the border of Vermont, New Hampshire, in a place called Hanover, New Hampshire. I've been there for 20 years. The claim to fame of the area is that's where Dartmouth College is, so it's kind of a unique place. Oh, definitely. Small Ivy League town. Yeah, yeah. Now, you uh, you guys planted 20 years ago, got into it, harp for the Northeast, and like any planter, you know, you're full of passion, full of vigor. You know you're going to run into some bumps here and there, but um, it's all going to work out, and uh, you, you you don't really know what you know until you, you face it. Um, you guys have faced some really unique challenges when it comes to building space, um, the connection with the town, um, and uh, to the point where I, you know, when you shared your story, like, it's just downright persecution. Um, in, in some unique ways where, uh, and so I'd love for you to just kind of share a little bit what's going on and, uh, when did it start and, and we'll kind of lead in from there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, there's some peculiar peculiarities to the town in which we live. It's a small town, but it's a high powered sort of town. As a matter of fact, the people who live there say this is Manhattan, Manhattan clientele with small town politics. That's okay. basically what it is. And so, uh, in its new England, so there is a general anti-development uh, sort of posture. So, um, and it's not a very churched area. You know, in other words, there's yeah. not a lot of uh, gospel-believing Christians relative to maybe other parts of the country or even the world. And uh, but yet, nonetheless, I think the most exciting thing is is that God has blessed us. Uh, he's given us an open door in that place. We <laughs> we've seen a congregation of 400 people grow up in a place where people said there was impossible to plant a church. Yeah. From there, we've planted two other churches, one in Vermont, 135 minutes away in uh, New London, uh, New yep, Hampshire. Yep. And so God's blessed, but in the midst of that, we always thought that we were going to be able to get a building right there in Hanover, right there in town. And so for the last 20 years, we've been trying to do that. Uh, and we've had multiple attempts. We've looked at probably well over two dozen properties. So where did you start? Yeah. Where did you start meeting? Oh, yeah. We, so, so, yeah, we, we meet at the Hanover High School, mm-hmm. uh, which is an amazing thing in yeah. and of itself. I mean, I thought there's no way this we'll uh, secular Ivy League town is going to yeah. let us use their school. And quite honestly, uh, there's been a wide open door. I mean, the laws are pretty clear on this yeah. sort of stuff, but they've had a wide open door and they've been very welcoming. I mean, there's people in the community who want, want us to be there, maybe in some people in the school, but the administration's been very open to us being there. And we've been there for 20 years. Mm. So in with, you know, which is a wide open opportunity to be able to preach the gospel. So we're very grateful for that. And we see this as God's sovereign care for us in the midst of it. But nonetheless, as it's related to us trying to get a permanent space Mm -hmm. in the town, that's where it's been uh, a problem. And, uh, you know, the uh, the situation, I don't know how much you want me to go into explaining here, but the situation basically is is that the town in which we live, as is this true of many towns, uh, the zoning laws were written, you know, 50, 60 years ago, yeah. when people welcome churches into their neighborhoods. And so the town privileges, the town zoning laws, privileges churches being in neighborhoods. Uh, that's the way things are written. But nowadays, when you go to go uh, build a church into these sort of places, you get a lot of NIMBY, mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of not in my backyard sort right. of thing. But you're bound by these laws that were written 50, 60 years ago uh, that assumed that people would welcome the church into the neighborhood. And so uh, as we've tried to, to get approval for a church, uh, initially, actually, very interestingly, we, 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 we knew that this NIMBY thing was going to be an issue. So we initially tried to go uh, in and plant or build a church building in a commercial district. Mm. Yeah. And the yeah. town, this was 12 years ago, said, you're not allowed to do that. Our zoning laws say it has to be in a neighborhood. It has to be in a residential neighborhood. Mm-hmm. We said, well, don't you think people are going to be upset about that, you know, if we try to build a church in a neighborhood nowadays? Say, so, no, that's what the laws say. So 
in the last three years, within the last three years, we've been before the zoning board uh, trying to do what they told us to do. And that is we got a nine acre parcel of land, which is a beautiful piece of land. One you mile. You did buy that? We, but we ended and up buying it. What, what year did you? Uh, 16, I think. Okay. Uh, Oh, 2000, yeah, maybe okay. 2016, 2017, somewhere. So we we, st- I, we we definitely started looking at it three years ago, and I think we mm-hmm. purchased it about six months after that. Okay. Yeah. So, so anyway, we um, uh, we were hoping that we, everything was going to be good, and we've just had roadblock. We've been we've been in the, before the zoning board for the last uh, two and a half years. Sure. And, and we still don't have resolution. Mm-hmm. Um, I could go into more details, but yeah. maybe you want to ask yeah. other questions at that yeah. point. You, you no, that, that's helpful. It, the first thing I'd love to just get your perspective on, I mean, you've been doing portable church in a school for <laughs> 20 years. Thank Did you, you have to set up chairs? Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that in itself is remarkable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how have you kept the team motivated and engaged staying on mission? You know, because I yeah. know for a lot of guys out there that are planting, like they may get in two years and be right. like, I can't do it anymore. I can't do it. And so, I mean, 20 years is, is you, you've earned the right to speak into this. And so yeah. share, share some of your insights. I, Lee, I so appreciate that. I mean, <laughs> I appreciate you acknowledging that because uh, that's not an easy thing. Not at <laughs> all. Uh, I mean, literally, we have been uh, unloading and loading a trailer yeah, for wow. a thousand Sundays. Yeah. A wow. thousand Sundays. And we've got a three, 400 person church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot. It's, it's a lot, a lot to do. So, first of all, I have an amazing wife <laughs> who has, you know, uh, been a key player in the midst of this and helping to create a culture of service and ownership and these sorts of things, which has been absolutely. Uh, blessing, absolutely critical. Anybody in the church would say, yeah, she's amazing. So uh, there's that. But, you know, I think we have amazing people. And, you know, the vision has always been, it's never been about the building. We've always said from the beginning, we want to have a building. We think that's a good tool for the permanence of the gospel, the visible presence of the gospel in this community. But it's never been about the building at the end of the day. It's about the people and it's about reaching the people of this community and caring for these people in this community. And so we've always... I mean, Romans 15 said, you know, about how uh, Christ did not please himself. And so we're not going to please ourselves. We're going to please others and we're Mm going to serve others. And that means most immediately serving those within the body of Christ. And if that requires setting up chairs, setting up nursery, you know, setting up, we literally have to set up our entire sound equipment every week. Mm -hmm. Uh, They won't allow us to use the sound equipment. Understandable. That's fine. Sure. But we, we have to set up, it's, it's, so it's a quite a production, but if that's what it takes for our church to be served and for the community to be served with the gospel, our people are going to do it. And that's the culture that we've created and we've maintained that, you know, by the mm-hmm. grace of God, by keeping that gospel out at the center that Christ gave himself for us. So how can we not give ourselves for others? Yeah. That's yeah. the bottom line. Don, I have a question. How do you lead your church through this to not create a us-them mentality? Like, oh, the the city, the other people, they're yes. bad, the church. Um, and yet at the mm-hmm. same time, not um, be taken advantage of or just not move forward with what you feel is, you know, yeah. God leading you and the body of believers to uh, establish a building? Again, <laughs> Danny, that's a great, great question. Because honestly, for myself as a pastor— and as a church planning pastor, meaning I came into the community to care for, for and the, reach the yeah. people, last thing we want to do is to create an antagonistic relationship mm-hmm. to anyone in the town. That we're, And so we obviously don't want to do that. So I think it's been very, we, it, we've had to be very careful about what we do in, in the way we speak uh, about what's going on. And so, I mean, uh, we, we've tended to not think of this in terms of persecution with all due respect, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we've just said, hey, this is the cost of doing business in this community. If we want mm-hmm. to belong to this community, uh, this is not, it's it maybe hard for people in other parts of the country to understand, this is not an unusual way of operating. The stuff that we're facing, mm-hmm. many other entities within our town have had to face it. Yeah. Now, for me, it's a little bit of shock to the system that a church would have to go through so, so much work yeah. to to get this. And, and even still, we don't know we're going to get this sort of approval that we think rightfully we, we should be able to get. So, mm-hmm. So uh, we've uh, we've we've tried not to p- place it in that sort of a thing that's an antagonism against the town yeah. in any way or, or even the people in town. We have particular residents of the town who are 
are very much against us. And actually, honestly, even in the newspapers and stuff saying some very negative things about us, we have chosen not to respond to mm-hmm. those things publicly. You know, we've not, in other words, we're not, we're not going to write yeah. back to letters to the editor to turn this into some sort of, uh, of, a, of a social media yeah. war, that right, sort of a yeah. thing, but we're going to serve, you know? So we do service days, we do these sorts of things and knowing that, I mean, look what Jesus faced. I mean, Jesus yeah. to the very people he was, he was giving his life for was spit upon, his beard was plucked out, he was whipped, you know, like, uh, and we're not facing anything like that, you mm-hmm. know, in this situation. It's not fun. Uh, it's frustrating, I'll admit, but yeah. like, it, when you put it in terms of the cosmic picture of Christ, it's nothing. It's, yeah. you know, it's really nothing. And so that's what we've done. At the same time, I did a series of sermons a year ago, uh, or almost a year ago now, uh, where we looked at Acts 16, where Paul in the book of Acts, uh, in Acts 16, when he's in Philippi, on the one hand, he totally yields his rights Mm -hmm. when he's in the prison, and the the prison door is open. He has every freedom to run out and say, I'm going to get out of town, right? And and he doesn't do that because he knows that if he does that, the Roman jailer Mm -hmm. is going to lose his life and not know Christ. So he lays down his life. He stays there. Uh, at the risk of his own life, and sees the Roman jailer come to faith in Christ. So he mm-hmm. yields his uh, political rights mm-hmm. at that point, or his freedom. And then he turns right around in the next, the very next scene where he begins demanding his rights before the authorities of right. town for the way that he has been treated. Yeah. What is the connector between those two things? My friends, look, the thing that connects both of those is the gospel. Yeah. He, he yielded his rights for the gospel, and then he demanded his rights mm-hmm. for, for the gospel so that this fledgling church would have political status in this town. Yeah. And so that's the, that's the careful... Uh, thing that we're trying to thread and navigate yeah. as we go through this this context. Yeah. But what words? I, I appreciate you sharing that, Don. What what words would you say to encourage a young planter that's facing some of those challenges, whether or not it's being portable for a long time, or just wrestling with the town's acceptance of them? Yeah, or school district or whatever. Yeah. There's those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, who's wrestling with that? Uh, I mean, I just ha- I, again, I, I want to st- take a big step back and say, make sure you're seeing this through the big picture. You know, um, uh, make sure you're seeing like we may not. I don't know what you. Th- I would say to that person, I don't know what you think is success in your mm-hmm. context. Mm-hmm. You know, what 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 would be a win if it's just getting what you want when you want it, mm-hmm. as it relates to a building or approvals or uh, uh, the fundraising, whatever it might be. Uh, then um, you're going to be riding a, a roller coaster of of happiness and unhappiness. Uh, and I get that. I struggle. I struggle to not uh, focus, on, you know, yeah. have my focus to be on those things. But when you b- take a big step back, no, my goal here is to give my life uh, for the sake of the gospel. Uh, that's the bottom line category. And then you start building from there. So what is it going to take for me to do that? Okay, I'm going to have to motivate my people again for another season. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to cast that vision once again as to why this is valuable. I'm going to have to watch a family leave the church who just feels like they can't take living in this sort of out of a out of a suitcase environment, <laughs> you know, yeah, and yeah. say, okay, that, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to have to live with that mm-hmm. uh, for the sake of, of the gospel. And while at the same time encouraging them not to do that, you know, we, fortunately, we've not had a lot of that. And, uh, but it's just going to take work. And we're here, you know, we're the church vigilant. <laughs> yeah. We're not the church yeah. at rest right now. We're yeah. the church vigilant. Uh, in other words, we're in, in warfare, not against people, uh, mm-hmm. not against flesh and blood, yep. Uh, yep. but against principalities and powers. And, and how did Jesus defeat uh, those principalities and powers? He gave his life. He gave his life away, you know, and that's how, uh, what we're trying to do. So I don't know if that makes any sense. No, I think that's a, a great word. And, and Don, I, I appreciate you sharing your heart and sharing the story that God has been writing, you know, there in New Hampshire and, and really beyond. And I think it resonates with a yeah. lot of planters from around the country and being an encouragement, but also the, the right challenge to where they're at and how they lead as, as well. So thanks so much for your time. And uh, thank you all for tuning in. This has been the Unfiltered Podcast. 
Until next time, keep it real.